Welcome to the Beyond the Business Podcast, where we dive deep into the impact local business owners have on their communities. Listen in as we talk with relationship-focused business owners who share their stories and how their businesses are creating legacies. Here is your host, Corey Bauman. Well, welcome to the Beyond the Business Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Bauman, and I am so excited today to have on our first guest, Patricia Dobler. Patricia, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I am so excited to be the first guest and to just yes. be here with you today. Yeah, thanks for joining me. So Patricia, I'm going to give, give everybody out there a little, um, little bio for Patricia. So Patricia is a certified aromatherapist. Um, she is a blue family, which means her husband is a retired police officer. So thank you and thank him for his service. And I know as uh, wives of police officers, you also serve. So uh, thank you for, for your service there also. And then you have two kids. And I always, I always want to know outside of your business, because we're going to talk a lot of business today. What are the things that you like to do outside of your business? And um, you said family movie night and also the outdoors. I can relate to that. We love the outdoors too. So, hey, happy to have you with us. Um, what else? Tell us a little bit about Patricia. Uh, tell us about, um, you know, just tell us, tell us about your, your business and kind of what drives you with your business. How did you get to, uh, how'd you get to start, start your business and become a, a certified aromatherapist? Yeah. Uh, well, our journey started actually in New York. We are born and bred New Yorkers. The accent may come in and out. Um, so about eight years ago, we were just on a mission to start looking at the things in our home that weren't serving us as far as the products we were using. And we then started to make the switch to our natural solutions with essential oils and really just opened up a lot of doors. I was in sales and marketing in corporate America before. I then, we saw the path of wanting to start a family. So I stopped doing that. But then, of course, you still need some income, right? So we stumbled upon this business opportunity within network marketing. And it really, we really fell in love with the business model itself. And of course, the love of what we were doing and how we were serving others came first. But then we just discovered what a great business model it was. And we started our own business. And the real, I guess, the journey that we've been on was this and I always call it my path through fear to freedom. Uh, we had some real difficult health challenges with my son and I felt powerless a lot of times. And the way I got my power back was by using essential oils, using to first of all, calm myself and manage my stress, but also to support him and his body. And it gave me such a feeling of empowerment that I knew that I had to share it with others and help other families get that empowerment back when sometimes you feel powerless as a parent. So I went and got my certification as an aromatherapist to take it a little bit more seriously. And then of course we had some challenges moving from a st one state to the next. We ended up in Pennsylvania in 2020. So moving during a pandemic too, more challenges, but uh, we're finding our way here in Pennsylvania and finding wonderful new communities to become a part of customer bases here and, and really great friendships too. That's awesome. Well, so much in there and I'm going to unpack that a little bit. So, you know, one of the things we want to do with this podcast is we want to talk about why people quote stumbled across their business in some cases, right? It was maybe not intentional. It was kind of like <clears throat> your life was changed by a service or a product and you then developed a business around it because you have such a passion for it. So I want to dive a little bit deeper into, you mentioned your son having some challenges, kind of what was that like? Um, how did you get introduced to, to the oils themselves? And then like, when was this moment where you were like, I just, it's been such an impact for me. Like I need to figure out how to like help other people. So we started using them. I really started using them because I was having headaches and I just was tired of using traditional medications to control them. So we started just getting little aha moments of, wow, these are working. They're supporting us doing great. Of course, my husband was super skeptical, you know, logical cop brain was like, okay, you go have your little essential oils. But then he became the police officer with a diffuser in his police car, a kid of his own oils telling all the guys about the oils. So it was pretty funny, but he's actually the one that pushed me to do this because he saw how passionate I was just in speaking about them. And he's the one that said, you should do this as a business. 
we started using when I was pregnant with my second child. And I was like, there's no way I am starting a business while being pregnant. But as any business owner knows, there's no good time or perfect time to start a business. Uh, so my husband pushed me to do it. And my son was at that point about three and a half. So we started sharing for the next year and loving everything, but not having that real why yet, you know, kind of just skirting around it of just, okay, it's a business. He then, when he was four and a half, started having febrile seizures. Uh, his first one was extremely traumatizing for me. He was turning blue on the couch. I had to do CPR, call 911, which no parent should ever have to call 911 for their child. And uh, it was that moment of, wow, this is my story going forward, huh? I'm going to lose my child because I didn't know really anything about it. And thankfully, every police officer pr pretty much that was on duty showed up. We got us help and um, got to the hospital. The doctor was pretty nonchalant about it. And here I am freaking out. And then we went home, we figured out what the virus was that he had and starting to calm down a couple of weeks later, he has a second one. He has a second one, two weeks to the day, go back to the hospital, the whole same routine. And the doctor says, well, there's nothing really more you can do. He's just going to keep having them. You should just, you know, you just have to really realize that there's nothing you can do. You can't tell a parent that. So I went home having my power just taken away from me and feeling powerless, looking at my child, watching them, just waiting for the next one. And a good friend of mine, who was the person that introduced me to oils, who's now my business partner, she said to me, you've got to do something. You've got to feel like you're doing something. And so I taught myself how to do the, a specific application of, this, of essential oils to just support his body, the different systems of his body. And I, I started feeling my power come back. Like, okay, I'm doing something. I'm actively doing something to help my child. And then using them to manage my own stress because I can't pour from an empty cup. And that was the moment that it switched from being living in fear to starting my path to freedom. And I then needed to teach others. And I took it a lot more seriously from that point forward of doing the business with more strategy in mind and, and intention because this message needed to get out to other parents. And I wasn't going to be ashamed of my message anymore. I wasn't going to be um, shy away from sharing it anymore because this is something everyone needed. Wow. So how is your son doing now today? He is two years seizure free. Wow, that's awesome. He was diagnosed technically with an atypical non-determined febrile seizure disorder because he would actually have them on very hot days without mm. even having a fever or a virus. So that <laughs> took a little power away again, trying to figure out, okay, so now there's no way to know when it's going to happen. But um, it's really more traumatizing for me. He doesn't remember anything, of course, but he is healthy. He's strong. We had switched into really powerful supplements too. And we work very hard to keep him well, right? Because when you get sick, it's when possibly you might run a fever. So we do everything in our power to keep his body well. Wow. That's scary. I mean, we have a, uh, almost eight year old now should be eight year old, eight years old in two, two weeks about. So, and it's, I can't even imagine. I mean, the, the second, you know, she comes down with a little cold or whatever. And especially like as a dad, you think differently maybe than the mom does. Right. But the mom, you know, I, I just, I can't imagine. So that's, sorry, you had to go through that, but you know, at the same time, you know, it's gotten you to a place now where you're, where, where, and so many businesses have done this. It's now you're be, you're able, because of that, you're able to uh, impact so many other people. Um, and I love oils. I mean, I was skeptical. Trust me, I was skeptical. My, my wife introduced me to them, but um, I use, I use them often, actually use the lavender often um, to sleep. And I, I, I uh, was just sick and a little bit. And I told you, um, but I've used the flu bomb. So I've definitely used oils and I believe in them. They do, they do help for sure. Um, the one thing that I want to touch on, uh, because I think this is kind of <clears throat> in some ways, the reason that, you know, multi-level marketing companies and some of the companies out there that sell products get a bad name at times is because they're, you know, the person's either they're bouncing from company to company to company, Right building teams. I get it. I understand the whole model and everything. I understand it, but those, maybe those people have never really found that, that, um, 
that driving why like you have right to to do to do what you do and create a business out of it where it's not just a product or a service and i know we've talked we've talked and i kind of know some of the things that you're working on right now but you've taken some steps to make sure that this is just it's more of it's a business and you have a product that gets introduced at some point tell tell everyone how you've kind of taken it though from that product that you're using to a business um, as a consultant or whatever, you know, whatever you're doing now with it. Yeah, well, it really is a huge part. It is solely really uh, in thanks to Master Networks um, and opening my eyes to being more of an entrepreneur. I still giggle and, and don't see myself as like a, an entrepreneur, you know, or a business owner, but, um, but I am. And after being surrounded by such high level entrepreneurs within master networks, it's opened my eyes to what my possibilities are. Mm. So I am now not pinning myself into that little, just one corner of being a certified aromatherapist and really focusing on what my message and my core is, is that path from fear to freedom and what that looks like and sharing my story in becoming an author and sharing that story as a supportive method for other parents that have gone through it. Um, Creating eBooks of things that I'm passionate about. So it's really helping me to branch off and develop this overall mission of helping others get on their own path from fear to freedom and freedom, not meaning in any political term, freedom being whatever's stepping away from whatever's holding you back from being the best version of yourself. That's awesome. There's so many things as business owners we can do with our businesses that sometimes it can be overwhelming, right? So how do you, as, as Trisha, I'm talking to Trisha now, how does Trisha choose what to invest her time in her money and those types of things? Like there's so much out there and there's so much, there's so many flashy things out there that we can choose uh, to help us with our businesses and not all of them do, but how do you choose? Like what made you like, like, where did you get to the place where you said, I want to write a book? I want, I want to write an ebook or whatever it is. I think it's an ebook, right? Yeah. Well, it's funny. (laughs) I am a big believer in, I mean, it's really not surprising I'm into oils and woo-woo stuff, but I am a big believer in energy and intuition. I've seen, and, and, and within the network marketing realm, there's of course a ton of coaching opportunities available. There's a coach left and right, right? For every type of person, every, everything. And I've seen different ones at different price points and I've kind of scoffed at them like, that, you know, I think it's because I never saw the value of how it could impact me personally. I didn't make a connection. But when I sat, um, I was recently at the Master Networks uh, convention called Connect. I finally saw a coaching program that I knew was going to bring me value. I saw the worth of it. So that's when I decided to make the investment. And it was a huge decision for our family. But with every fiber of my being, I knew in my body, I could feel it. I knew that this is where I needed to be with these people. This is where I was going to grow the most and be able to be vulnerable and in a place of complete safety to explore these other avenues of becoming a bigger entrepreneur, a whole well-rounded entrepreneur. So having a group of what I'm hearing you say is coaching for one, obviously find a, you know, find a good coach, find a good mentor, find, but not just that, find a good group of people to surround yourself with that can help you zero in on some of the things that are going to be most important and have the biggest impact on your business. Because if you go on Google and you Google ways to, you know, I'm just example, like ways to help you grow your business. My goodness. Like that's, you know, it's so overwhelming. There's so many things out there and there's, there's so many experts, right. But those, there's a lot of people out there that haven't really done it and they claim to be experts. So it's really hard if you're isolated to know where to turn next um, which is leading into, and you already, you already mentioned kind of master networks. Um, so Rachel, your business partner, she was already in master networks in New York, right? Actually, I was in first. Or you were in first. Tell me yeah. that story. So how did, how did you get introduced to master networks? And then, you know, how did you bring Rachel in? Like how, like, how did that all happen? So I, again, moving from New York to mm-hmm. Pennsylvania in 2020, so no one is really ready for in-person events yet, right? We're not going to school, to the PTO meetings, to ballet, where you're meeting people, able to connect and, and talk about what you do. So 
you have to think outside the box if you're going to grow a business. So I immediately knew I needed a networking group. So I stumbled upon a couple of different ones in Pennsylvania. They were not the right fit for me, nothing against them. They just didn't vibe right for me. And so I put a post in a community Facebook group, like, are there any business networking groups? And somebody introduced me to Michelle Davis, who's the, pr- the president of the Doylestown chapter of Master Networks. And immediately upon talking and meeting Michelle and then sitting in on my, on my first meeting there, I knew this was the place for me. I knew these were people that were going to be invested in my growth and in my success and, um, and just in my life, like want to know about me, want to care about me. And I just felt, especially a person moving to an area and not knowing it, it'd be like, I kind of just want a tribe of people too. So that's how I got into it in, uh, I think like October of 2020. And I told Rachel, my business partner in New York, and she actually got introduced to it uh, quickly short uh, after me from another business owner in New York. And she didn't put it together that it was the same one that I was funny. So yeah, that's funny. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that story. So that's, that's, it's good to hear that. I always, I'm always curious how people got to become part of our community. Obviously most of the time it's because they're invited by somebody else. Um, And that's how we grow. We don't, you know, you're, you can find master networks on Google, of course, but people don't generally Google it and find it and then show up. It's like they get invited and that's how we grow. And that's all the relationship that we put the time and effort into building. Um, so you join master networks, you start to get that community of people. Tell me a little bit about that experience for you. What has that done for you? Um, and honestly, like if somebody is listening to this right now, yes, we are all part of master networks, right? Our community is master networks, but just in general, um, what would you tell somebody, right? That's looking for a community. Um, how important is it to be involved in one, uh, in a networking community, you know, that kind of thing, what does it do for you? Well, I had been in a chamber of commerce in New York. So I knew the benefit and I had been in a rotary club. I was president of rotary. You know, I, I know the benefit of being around other business owners, um, for a multitude of reasons, your mindset growth, you know, everything, but I, uh, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, just yeah, just more of like how important you know how important why why would somebody want to seek out a networking group or a community of other people? Because a lot of times, and, and we see this all the time, you know, somebody might say, Well, I've been in business for 15 or 20 years, 10 years, whatever it is, and you get to a place where um, and I'm a lifelong learner, I know you are, we've talked about this, but some people some people kind of like, they stop learning, like they get to a place where they feel like they might be the expert and they don't really need it. But anybody, whether you've been in business for 20 years or one year, less than one year, whatever it is, you need that community. So what has that done for you and why would you recommend people do it? Well, I know, at least I knew ahead of time before I even came to Master Networks, but I know networking is not passive, right? I uh, So I went all in with it. I know that it's not just going to, people are just going to kind of flock to me. I seek them out. That's who I am. So I know to seek people out. So I put in the effort of reaching out past just a meeting and getting to know people and do that. So that's just who I am. So it comes very easily for me. I know that's not everybody's personality, but for me, it comes very easily and I want more and more. I I don't get tired of doing face-to-face one-on-one type of situations with people because I just love learning about other people. I am a people person. So I would do face-to-faces and networking all day long. And during these crazy times, networking has really become the only uh, way my business is growing at this Mm -hmm. point. So I have to nurture it. I have to put in the effort. It is one of my sole income producing activities that we talk about often in building a business and where you put your time networking is it. So at first I would see a face-to-face like, oh, I'm just going to a networking meeting, but no, no, no. This is an income producing activity. It is worth my time. It is worth being present. And I put that into everything that I do with it. Mm. Okay. So that that last piece you said was gold. And, And this is, I think, a missed opportunity for a lot of folks that network is that they don't treat it as a as a lead generation activity, they treat it as a marketing activity in some cases or a social event, a place to kind of kick back, you know, chat with your friends. So let me be, I mean, let's be clear. Like, let's be honest. I mean, 
that some of that does happen, right? And it should happen. I mean, that's part of us socializing as human beings. But we always say this at, at our meetings is that that meeting, that networking meeting you're at, if you're intentional about it, it should be literally the most important meeting you have all week and the most productive meeting you have all week because you have a board of directors, whether it's master networks or one or, or another networking group. If your group's not doing that for you, it's not working for you, but you also have to put the time and the effort into, uh, into putting, into building the relationship. And yeah, it, I mean, it is completely a lead generation activity. Um, and that doesn't make it less relational, right? No. But you but have to be more relational. <clears throat> absolutely. There's absolutely a way to keep it, to show up authentically and with intention for that relationship building, but still always be building a business. It's, uh, there's absolutely a balance there. I believe it. I, I can sit back. My listening skills have grown so much from being in Master Networks. I'm not a great listener. I'm a talker. So it's really helped me with my listening skills. And I'm able to sit back and just listen and grow. But that alone is just building that, re that relationship that will you ultimately in any way, it's going gonna, it's gonna to grow my business. I know that. So good. So good. Thank you. Um, so one last thing before we wrap up, uh, one, of the, one of the things that we want to do with this podcast is we want others to share how they feel they want their business to impact their community, the people around them, and ultimately leave a legacy uh, when they're gone, right? Um, and legacy isn't only when you're gone, right? You're leaving a legacy now, but like, what is that legacy? Like, what is, it could be different for everyone, but what's the legacy piece of that business you're creating that you want to leave uh, you want to leave to your community, to the people around you? I think, I think there's probably like two avenues of that legacy. I think one is always personal, you know, especially when you become a parent and a business owner, you, I have a legacy of leaving things for my children to always remember about me, that their mom showed up, their mom didn't give up, that their mom created something out of nothing and um and you know there are generational trauma that can be talked about that we're break that i'm breaking too you know and and starts a new path for my children by becoming a strong female business owner mm -hmm. um so i'm very grateful for that and that's a legacy that i work on showing up to make my children proud every single day um and then the bigger community, the what I want to leave on each one of my customers that has come into my life over the past each year, eight years, is that I left them feeling slightly more empowered, slightly better, like that they were able to take that one step forward. Because some days for people that come to me, they feel like whether it's something emotional, physical, they're being held back and they can't take that first step forward. If I can be that person that helps them just take that one step forward, that is a legacy that I want to leave. And I also have a bigger vision eventually down the line that it's going to come around to police families as well. And it's going to be leaving a powerful impact on police families to be able, I'm a healer, it's who I am, to be able to travel to different police departments. Every police officer needs to have an essential oil experience. I believe that with every part of my being because of the trauma that lives in their body, and the calls they go on from what they see. And I, I want to be able to give them a little bit of hope that, that they can move through that trauma with this power of sense, with the power of touch and all that. So. That is awesome. And you have a husband that can stand on the stage with you and, and vouch for it in front of his police friends, right? <laughs> well, it's not fluffy. It's not, but fluffy. That's, that's putting a lot on the big guy. You know, I'm the talker. Uh, he's, the, he's the researcher. He does all the behind the scenes business stuff. Yeah. Um, but I'm the one that comes out to do it all. But, but yeah, he has no problem talking one-on-one -on -one for sure with other police yeah. officers about the power of what we've seen the last eight years in using them. Everybody needs a good partner behind the scenes, right? Oh, Everybody for sure. That. So, so that's important. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. And, um, you know, as you're talking, I was thinking of how cool it's going to be for your son, you know, in years and years to look back and you'd be able to kind of share that story with him of what, what you went through when he was having seizures and how you turned this thing into a business that's impacted so many people. 
Um, yeah, that's the goal this year is to get it written out because I feel it's important that other, not, not from a uh, clinical viewpoint, yeah. from a parent to validate other parents' um, feelings. So that's what we're working on getting that story out this year and sharing it. So is that the ebook or is that something different? That's actually going to be a book book. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So we have a goal. So, so the ebook's not done yet though, right? You're working no, I'm working on those two because okay. I got in my head and I overthought it and revamped it. But yes, the ebooks are more tools for definitely what I feel most confident in sharing about essential oils. And okay. for me, that's uh, DIY and um, switching out all the toxic products in my home. So that's going to be more that. And then the, the book that we're writing is definitely our story and our journey with our son. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm looking forward to it. So keep me posted Thank on that. You. I'll definitely be buying a copy of that one. Andrew ebook, let me know when that's done. Um, I'm, I was, it's so funny. I was going to ask, how do people find you? And I see the QR code behind you. Now, if you're listening to this and you're not watching the video, you won't get the QR code. Well, you know what? Well, it's easy, it's an easy website. In the description, I'll put the website, but what is the, what, like, how can people get a hold of you? So I'm big on social media. So if you want to see silly dancing, cute puppies, um, and me make a fool of myself while I try to share some information about essential oils, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, it's my whole family essentials. Awesome. My whole family essentials. And, uh, and the website is uh, www.myholefamilyessentials.com. Awesome. And I'll put that information in the description here on the podcast and you can look for it there. Trisha, thank you for being our first guest on the podcast. Thanks, Corey. This is yeah. pretty painless. See, I told you it'd be fun. <laughs> it's fun, right? We're just talking we're talking like two long lost friends. And uh, now I appreciate you sharing your heart today because that's important for business owners to know that it's not always about, yes, we have to grow our businesses. It's not always about the, the next sale. It's about the next person you can come in contact with and build a relationship with that. Yes, maybe it leads to a sale, but maybe they just share what they've learned with someone else and it impacts them that way. Right? And there's maybe so many they're the ways. person that is the next step to the next thing that you're supposed to do. Maybe yes. they may never be a customer of yours. But maybe they need, they may be the who that gets you to the next step. Yeah. They're not all customers and that's okay. No, and absolutely we say it all not. The time. So, well, thank you so much again. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Trisha. Thanks for listening to the first episode of the On the Business podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Beyond the Business podcast. We hope that you have been inspired to create positive impact in your community and a legacy worth leaving. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all of the major podcast platforms.